riperile kuyenant dimelang it's exactly 15 months since we declared a national state of disaster in response to the coronavirus pandemic we have never experienced a health crisis of this severity before no one that is so prolonged it is understandable that many south africans now feel tired and weary we mourn the many lives that we have lost of our loved ones our relatives our friends he's not talking loud enough and we are struggling to cope with the huge impact that this pandemic has had on the livelihoods of millions oh please of south africans you want us to have sympathy for mps not for citizens I know that we have grown impatient Yes, we have. With the constraints that have been placed on our lives. Unconstitutional we constraints. That you are all concerned about constraints that restrict your freedom to move around or to travel. Please. Your freedom to gather, to socialize, to worship. And in some instances, your freedom to even earn a living. Then stop them. Yet... We also know that these <laughs> restrictions have been effective in containing the spread of the virus. And what scientific evidence do you offer to prove that? We have gone through and endured two devastating waves of infection. So you claim. But working together, we have brought down infections. Hey, Taz, girl. And prevented the loss of many lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Counterfactual. Can't prove it. Know that as difficult as the last 15 months have been, we have started to recover and to rebuild. No, you haven't. Although it has encountered several setbacks, our mass vaccination program is gaining momentum and we are finally... <laughs> the of Less than 1% of the population! But although we have reason to hope we still have a mountain to climb. Yeah. <laughs> a third wave of infections is upon us. A uh, third wave of cadres is upon we us. We have to contain this new wave of infections. Since I last spoke to you just over two weeks ago. Mm. Has it been that recently? The number of daily new infections has doubled. <gasps> no! Did you bring it back from the G7? Recording around 3,700 daily infections. <gasps> Over the last seven days, we have recorded an average of 7,500 daily infections. Wow. Hospital admission count. due to COVID-19. Over the last 14 days, are 59% higher than the preceding 14 days. <gasps> The average number of people who die from COVID-19 each day has increased by 48% from 535 two weeks ago to 791 in the past seven days. That colonial math. With the exception of Northern Cape. Settler math. All provinces are experiencing rising infections. Yeah, rising all anger. provinces, Gauteng, the Free State, Northwest, and Northern Cape are officially in a third wave, while others are approaching that point. And what's the mark of a third wave? The proportion of COVID tests that are positive, the Correct. so called positivity rate, is continuing to rise in Gauteng, Limpopo, Western Cape, Free State, and KwaZulu Natal. Of these, Gauteng has been the worst hit. <gasps> it accounts the most heavily populated of new cases measured over the last week. Shocker. The increase in infections in Gauteng is now faster and steeper than faster. it was at the same time in previous waves. <laughs> Within a matter of days, it is likely that the number of new cases in Gauteng will surpass the peak of the second wave. That sounds like science. You should stop doing that. Private hospitals in the province have reported that they are near capacity. Science must fall. 
we have to act decisively and must act quickly to save lives. And to do this, we need to return to the basics. We need to remind ourselves Correct, Taz. how this virus is spread. By so corrupt politicians. Each one of us makes sure that we behave in a way that reduces the chances of transmission. Oh, okay. We must not disregard the basic precautions that we know are so essential. Like? Our scientists inform us that oh, scientists. it is through our behavior that mm. the virus is spread. Oh, so should we wear a condom? We must remember that many people who are infected with COVID-19 do not show any symptoms. <gasps> Then how can they be infected? Be sitting next to you in a taxi, who may be your co-worker or a friend with tuberculosis at a social gathering, may be infected. You could get infected as you are traveling in a taxi that does not have any windows open. Oh <gasps> no! You catch the virus from your co-worker who does not <gasps> wear their mask. Really? In a way that covers their nose or their mouth. Oh. Your wow. Friend or family member may not have washed or sanitized their hands before passing you a drink. Ooh. Food. Ooh. Did they wipe their bum? You may go to visit your elderly parents or grandparents. I'm so glad he's explaining this. Not knowing that you are infected. <gasps> you kill granny! You kill granny! You could visit your relative who has diabetes, <laughs> hypertension, or another underlying condition. ANC party status. Even though you feel healthy. You could even go to <sighs> church or a mosque. <gasps> Musk. Or you could go to a crowded restaurant. How about an empty center, restaurant? And all the time be passing on the virus <gasps> oh! and putting the health and lives of others at risk. Oh my goodness. It is unfortunately as easy as that. No, it's not. This disease around. When we know that we have been exposed to a person infected with COVID-19. Yes. We must follow the protocol to quarantine for 10 days. No, that sounds scientific. It may be for us. We can't do that scientific. This is one of the best ways to stop the virus from spreading further. You shut up is one way to stop it. Basic changes in behavior can make a huge difference. Yes, Tackling vote the, the ANC out. That would make all the difference. Now, we've spoken about this many times. Yes, you have. But it does condescension. bear repeating. No, it doesn't. Because oftentimes there are lapses in our behavior. We must be more diligent, oh, more yes. consistent, and more aware of our actions. Indeed. It's your fault. If we are careful and diligent, we can limit transmission and bring down the rate of infection. That has been proven over and over again. Do we use muti? The fewer people that are infected at any one time, yes. the fewer people get sick, <gasps> fewer people need to be hospitalized. I like that math. And fewer people need ICU care, and fewer people need ventilators. That's amazing, man. This guy is all switched you know, on. From the last two waves of infections and from experience around the world, is that when health facilities are overwhelmed, yeah. more lives are lost. No. Our priority oh my gosh. now is to make sure that there are enough hospital beds, mm -hmm. enough health workers, mm -hmm. enough ventilators, yeah. enough oxygen yeah. to give the best possible care to every person who needs it. Natalik. The massive surge in new infections means that we must once again tighten restrictions <gasps> on the movement of persons. Oh, no. Families. No cooked chicken. We need to enforce compliance more rigorously. I want open to choose. We need to take firmer action against those who do not adhere to the regulations that save our lives. But I love Jacques Cousteau. In view of the rising infections, the cabinet 
has therefore decided to move <laughs> Sammy to alert level three. <gasps> no! This will take effect later this evening once the regulations <laughs> have been gazetted. <laughs> Too late to get this your booze. This means that, one, the hours of curfew will start at 10 p.m. and end at 4 a.m. What if I can't count that high? Second, non-essential establishments like restaurants, bars, Parliament, fitness centers, Latuli House, will need to close by 9 p.m. to allow their employees and their patrons or customers to travel home before the start of the curfew. All gatherings will be limited to a maximum of 50 people indoors and 100 people outdoors. How many fingers is that 50? Where the venue is too small to accommodate these numbers with appropriate social distancing, mm -hmm. then no more than 50% of the capacity of the venue may be used. What's 50% of 100? Religious services, political events and social gatherings, as well as restaurants, bars, taverns, and similar places. Hmm. Next, attendance at funerals and crema cremations cremation not exceed 50 Cremation, people. Cyril, cremation. And all social distancing and health protocols must be observed. Of course. Night vigils, after funeral gatherings, and after tears gatherings, are not allowed. No! The sale of alcohol from <gasps> retail outlets Here it is. off site consumption will only be permitted between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. from Monday to Thursday. Mm. Mm. This excludes public holidays. Wow, there you go. Alcohol sales for on site consumption will be permitted as per license conditions up to 9 p.m. <laughs> Alcohol consumption in all public spaces, such as beaches and parks, is strictly beaches. prohibited. Beaches, beaches. Throughout our response to the pandemic, <laughs> we have sought to take measures to destroy South Africa. Appropriate and proportionate to the threat of infection. To impoverish the population. If we act too soon or impose measures that are too severe, the economy will suffer. Duh! What do you think has been happening for 18 Same months, time, genius? If we act too late or if our response is too weak, we risk losing control of the virus. <laughs> you don't control so it! Therefore, closely <laughs> monitor the data and heeded the advice of our experts and scientists. Our experts. The measures we are putting in place the are Goma. appropriate to the level of risk and are necessary to save the lives of We've people. consulted our Sangoma. In addition, several important measures... He sedated, Sami. It remains mandatory. Mandatory? Words, Is it mandatory? Mandatory? Every person to wear a face mask that always covers their nose and mouth at all times when in public spaces. It is a criminal offense not to do so. No, it's not. It's a regulation, dipshit. The owners and managers of public buildings, centers, shops, restaurants, taxis and buses all have a responsibility to ensure that people on their premises or in their vehicles wear masks. The world's they sickest joke, the Republic of South Africa. Appropriate social distancing measures are in place and are adhered to. Spare me. It's important to remember that it is a criminal offense if the number of people on these premises exceeds the maximum number of customers. <coughs> or allowed for Not a criminal offense, jackass. It's a regulation. Send him back to school. The move to alert level three will affect several aspects of our lives. Sorry to see you, Mr. Puncher. require changes to activities that we had planned. This includes, for example, arrangements for tomorrow's Youth Day commemoration, which was scheduled to be held in Peter Maritz back in KZN tomorrow. This will now be a hybrid event 
with a significantly <laughs> reduced number of people physically in attendance. We'll have electric cars. And a virtual address by the president. It's not a lolly, it's bullshit. We each have a responsibility to take the necessary action and vote the ANC out of office. Ourselves and others. It is up to each one of us to limit the risk to ourselves and others. Vote out the ANC by doing that. We are that. all aware that our vaccination program has experienced several delays. Mm, our first failures. Feedback was that after the arrival of our first batch of vaccines, our scientists discovered that the AstraZeneca vaccine <laughs> that we had procured from the Serum <laughs> Institute of India did not provide sufficient protection against the variants. <laughs> it provided some in protection. South Africa. <laughs> We've also been adversely affected by shortages in the global supply of vaccines. Adversely affected by stupidity. Vaccination programs across Africa and in many other low and middle income countries. Here it comes, vaccine apartheid. After AstraZeneca setback, <laughs> the Johnson & Johnson vaccine appeared to be the best option for our country. But our scientists were wrong again. It protects against the variant that we have here. That you invented in South Africa. It requires only a single dose. Ooh, just one jab. And it's easier to store and transport. Just a little prick and However, it's all over. The supply of Johnson & Johnson vaccines was held up by an investigation into contamination of ingredients. Tell the truth. It was a cash in transit heist. That's what held up the vaccine. In Baltimore, in the United States. Until now, our mass vaccination program has therefore had to rely on the Pfizer vaccine, which requires two doses. Oh. Nevertheless, 480,000 health workers have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to date as part of phase one of the program. Did they get a three-piece, streetwise? Phase two, a further 1.5 million health workers and people <laughs> no over more the tears. age of 60 have received the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> no more this brings the total number of people who have received a vaccine dose to almost 2 million. BS! That's not true. It's a lie. Has steadily picked up, and we are now vaccinating around 80,000 people a day at over 570 sites in the public and private sector. <laughs> This number will grow rapidly in the yes. weeks to come. Oh, of course, without any vaccine, it's going to grow. As many vulnerable, vulnerable people as possible. The problems with Johnson & Johnson vaccine have now been resolved. How so? As a result of these problems... Did you dance? Two million doses that had already been produced... Yes. ...at the factory in Kabecha. Nelson Mandela Bay are unusable. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. The Aspen plant in Eastern Cape is now able to go ahead and produce new doses. Why, did they clean the tanks finally? The company has committed to significantly ramp up production and begin supplying the country within the next few weeks. So how's the vaccine apartheid, dingus, if you're we producing it in South Africa? nearly 2.4 million Pfizer vaccine doses. By the end of June, we expect to have received... By the end of June. This clown told us in February, by April. By April. Now it's the end of June. We have received an indication from Johnson & Johnson... Yes. ...that it expects to deliver around 2 million vaccines to South Africa by the end of the month, thus replacing those 2 million doses that had to be destroyed. Because of incompetence. The initial doses we receive yeah, from Johnson & and Johnson will be used to vaccinate educators in our schools and thereafter security personnel on the front line. The now front that line? The delays in the supply of Speaking vaccine cop? is largely resolved. Works drift? Our immediate Where's the front line? task is to complete the vaccination of all those over 60 years of age without delay. Mm. It is estimated that we have the capacity at present to vaccinate at least 150,000 people a day. Well, that's all a and day. And we are planning to increase that to 250,000 a day as soon as possible. It's a lot of we needles. 300,000 a day, which we shall try and reach. I therefore call on every person in this country.
over the age of 60 to register. Mm. Whether online. Oh, did she get tired? We got a new hand signer. Or in person <coughs> and get vaccinated without delay. She must have got tired. On everyone else, if you know someone over 60 years of age who has not been vaccinated, please help them. Tell them on them. Drop dimes. Go get vaccinated. Narc on the over 60s. At Turn granny the in. The rate of infections rise across the country. There's one statistics that provides a clear reason for hope. And that is October 27th? A similar point in the rise of the second wave of yes. infections in early December last mm -hmm. year. There were 640 health workers infected by COVID-19 over a seven-day period. Mm. In the last seven days, only 64 health workers have and, been and how many of those people recovered from the flu, Cyril? Most of them, right? While it must be our unwavering determination to ensure that no healthcare workers are infected, mm. this is a significant reduction in infections, which can be attributed to the success of the first phase of our vaccination program. <laughs> this is evidence that vaccinations, vaccines do work. It must motivate us to accelerate the rollout of vaccines and to ensure that all people who are eligible do register. Eligible. Receive the eligible. Vaccine. Eligible. <laughs> Fifteen months ago, as I addressed the nation from here, <laughs> I you said, do. this pandemic right, will Neil. pass. No, it won't. Not until after the elections. It's up to us to determine how long it will last. <laughs> exactly. How damaging <laughs> it will be and how long it will take our economy yeah, I saw that day in the room. to recover. I continued to say it is true that we are facing a grave emergency. The ANC. But if we act together, I said. Vote against them. And if we act now, and if we act decisively, we will overcome it. <laughs> yeah, right. After all the time that has passed, after everything that we have experienced mm -hmm. and done. And died. And after all that we have achieved as a nation. You haven't achieved jack squat. still ring true. What words? We have endured so much as a nation and we have prevailed. No, you haven't. You've destroyed We've lives. mistakes along the way. You're corrupt. But we've also succeeded in making progress. Thieving. Racist. We will not be overwhelmed by uncertainty, by fear or despondency. We will not be daunted by the size of the hey, our complexity of the task that lies before us. We can now see a path towards overcoming this pandemic. Mm, vote the but NC out. still much that we need to do. Oh, she's a tourism minister. We have shown that we have the means and the will to fight this virus. No, you don't. You've shown that you're a totalitarian fascist regime. The way. And I'm more confident than ever that we will succeed. We are people made of Stena stuff as South Africans. Stena stuff. Succeed, we will, and succeed, we must. Oh, shut up. God continue to bless our beautiful country uh, uh, and protect her people. I thank you. Good riddance. Oh, my goodness. Okay, turn the camera off. Okay, did you tell him? Did, did his superiors tell him he could leave then? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's that's much better. I like that, that test pattern. That's much better from Ramaphosa. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is unbelievable. That is Cheryl Ramaphosa. Tonight's comedy hour has been featuring uh, Cyril Ramaphosa from the African National Congress. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Cyril. It's lovely to have you with us. You're quite a lovely guest. Pleasure to have you. And I'm back. Look at that. Cyril Ramaphosa. No alcohol sales outside of Monday through Thursday and no public holidays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. No drinking establishments may serve alcohol after 9 p.m. so that people can get home. 
no gatherings of more than 100 people, any capacity that's under 100 people or over 100 people, 50%, same old yada, 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 wah, 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 wah. So we consulted our scientist <laughs> in the Rondaval over there. <laughs> and the San Goma told us that it's not safe to go out to Nahuteng. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if cattle auctions will be locked down. Oh, good question, White Diamond Child. Uh, Wendy Stewart, thank God that's over. Exactly. I have to agree with that 100%. 100%. Thank God that's over. Van Hirden, Van Hirden Rensburg bloodline. Ja, nee, the puppet show is no, no klar. <laughs> Science must fall. Woo, science must fall. Throw the bones. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marilyn. I have a picture of Leon Schuster in my head when you say that. Throw the bones. <laughs> At least the beaches are open so they're not scared of the fourth wave. <laughs> Surfing. Thanks for doing the coverage. No, Marilyn, thanks for you guys for telling me about it. I knew that he was going to speak, but I didn't know it was tonight. Best of luck tonight as you descend into level... 96, stage 43 of load shedding and lockdown in South Africa for the 4,000th wave. Uh, for all you surfers out there, surf's up. God bless. Be safe. We'll see you tomorrow here on Chris Y in Africa. Thanks a lot for tuning in, folks. You guys are awesome. You rock. Thanks for the support of the channel. It's awesome. Let's see if we get back to where we once were. We're doing our best. Cheers.